And then you have the worst type of hearts where the reminder goes straight through it, unable to grow because of it and let alone benefit anybody else. Which heart is your? Where is your heart? When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was still a child playing with some of his friends, Angel Jibreel made his way to him and in front of those children, he wrestled him to the ground and he opened up his chest, a physical opening that is. And then he extracted his heart and then he opened his heart. Focus on these rusty hearts of ours to bring them back to a status that will be pleasing to Allah and will please us in this life before the next. Why the topic of hearts? Is this a topic that we've chosen to run away from the problems of reality? Is this a form of escapism? Don't we have anything better to talk about? Because there isn't anything on planet Earth that requires more attention and polishing and purifying and curing than the condition of the human heart. Yet the paradox is that there isn't anything that is more neglected and abused and exposed to all sorts of harm than that same human heart. Why have we chosen the topic of hearts? Allow me to share with you perhaps seven or so headings. The first, prophethood was here surrounded with open heart surgery. Prophethood began with a procedure upon the heart of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the famous hadith which Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Anas, he said that when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was still a child playing with some of his friends, Angel Jibreel made his way to him and in front of those children he wrestled him to the ground and he opened up his chest, a physical opening that is, and then he extracted his heart and then he opened his heart and pulled out from his heart a black clot of some sort and Jibreel said to that child this was shaitan's portion of you and then he took the heart and he washed it within a gold basin using zamzam water then the heart was sealed it was placed back into the chest and then the chest was sealed Anas ibn Malik the servant of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said I as his companion when he became a, a man I used to see the effects of the stitches on his chest so it was a literal surgery that was done to him. So notice how before he became a prophet, there was a need to cleanse what? There was a need to cleanse his heart. So prophethood began with the purification of the heart from a physical perspective. This is why this topic is so serious. Allah said, we're going to send down upon you, O Prophet Muhammad وسلم, a weighty speech, a heavy speech, so heavy that mountains couldn't bear it. Had the Quran been sent down, upon a mountain, what would have happened? You would see that mountain falling apart from the fear and the haybah, the awe of Allah. Mountains cannot receive the Quran. So what was the helipad? The helipad was the human heart and therefore it had to be prepared. That's number one. Why else have we chosen the topic of heart? Because the receptor of Islamic admonition is the heart. Did you understand this? The receiver, uh, what receives the Islamic reminder, whether Quran or Hadith or a Friday sermon or a lecture like this, what is receiving it primarily is your heart, not your ears, not any other sensory faculty that you have. It's your heart. That's where it's going. And this is precisely why Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said in Surah Al-Qaf, There is a reminder in this. For who? لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ For he who possesses a heart. There is a reminder in this. But for who? For he who possesses a heart, not an ear. For he who possesses a heart. Oh, al wa shaheed, or he gives ear whilst he is attentive. So it's going to the heart. How is it that two people may hear the exact same reminder, same content, same speaker, same pace, same tone of voice, yet they behave in polar opposite ways? We may get this disparity in this particular hall. Two people who hear the same message, but look at the difference between them. Person A uh, hears it and his eyes begin to water up with tears. Memories of the past start playing in his mind and a decision to change his life once and for all comes into play from this very evening. He hears the same content, but in one ear, out the other, unaffected. What's the differences between them? Nothing to do with their physical property. No difference in their health, in their fitness. That's not the idea. The idea is this one had a healthy heart and this one had an unhealthy. This Islamic heart was ready to receive the admonition and therefore it produced change. And this heart was not a healthy heart. It's obsessed with all sorts of sins and yearnings and cravings and haram. There's no room for this type of 
material anyway. And so it is pushed out. The difference is in the status of the heart. So the heart is the receiver of the Islamic content. This is just like rainwater. The same rain that falls upon land, but each plot of land behaves completely differently depending upon the properties of that soil. You have a land that is fertile, and so it absorbs the rainwater, and it's able to hold it in, it retains it. And then it's able to produce all sorts of colorful plants and beneficial herbage. Then you have a second plot of land that receives the same rain, but this land is different. It's a rocky terrain, it's unable to absorb the water. So it holds the water, it carries it. It benefits others who come to drink from it, but that land itself cannot produce anything. And then you have a third type of land, and this is the worst of them all. It's a salty or a uh, sandy plot of land where the rain goes straight through it. That land is unable to retain the water, thus producing anything beneficial, and therefore it is also unable to benefit itself. This is exactly the analogy of the human heart and how it behaves to revelation, like what you are hearing now, Islamic content, why people behave differently, because of how fertile hearts are. You have a heart that hears it, La ilaha illallah, it is time to change, and the vibes of that reminder stay with you for a week after it as well, maybe a lifetime even. So you retain that knowledge, and you grow because of it, and you're willing to share it with others as well. That's the fertile land. And then you have a second type of heart. It carries the information, but because it is ill, with a desire that you and I may know about, it cannot absorb it, but it can share it with others. Come to the lecture. I've memorized this ayah, listen to this hadith. But in of himself, he has not grown. And then you have the worst type of hearts, where the reminder goes straight through it, unable to grow because of it, and let alone benefit anybody else. Which heart is yours? And that is why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, search for your heart during one of three circumstances. When you hear the Quran recited, where is your heart? And during gatherings of remembrance, like this, where is your heart? And number three, when you are alone, when no one is looking, young man, search for your heart. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he concludes and he says, if you fail to find your heart during these three times, then make dua, ask Allah to give you a heart because you are a heartless human being. La ilaha illa. So we said, why have we chosen this topic? We said prophethood was foreshadowed with a procedure on the heart. Number two, the receptor of the Islamic information and admonition is the human heart. Number three, are you taking note? Number three, the motivator towards the doing of good deed is the heart. Yani, the, the practitioners of Islam, those who practice the religion, they do so because of their hearts that encourage them. This is simple, it's as simple as that. Didn't the Messenger وسلم, say in the famous hadith which Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Al Mu'man ibn Bashir? He said, There is a limb in the body. He said, there is a limb. If it is sound, the rest of the body will be sound. If it is corrupt, the rest of the body will be corrupt. He said, That limb is the heart. So the heart is the king. The heart is what issues the commands that gives out the instructions. These hands, these limbs, these private parts, they are simply obeying to the instruct instruction of a corrupt king or a just king. But it's the heart. So those who practice Islam, you see them. How is it that individual A is able to wake up for Salatul Fajr day in, day out seamlessly? Sometimes he or she, they don't even need their alarm clocks anymore. They say it's, it's a built-in alarm now. We just wake up without it. And then you have individual B who cannot remember the last time he listened to his al alarm and didn't pray Salatul Fajr 9 or 10 a.m. in the morning. What's the difference between them? They're both fit. They're both healthy. It's the condition of what? Condition of the heart. How is it that there may be two individuals, uh, two sisters say, for example, one of them is adamant upon the Islamic hijab, the correct Islamic hijab. She doesn't care what time of day it is. The hijab is hijab. And another one of our sisters who has a weakness, as we all do, and the hijab slips on and off according to the mood or the circumstance or the occasion. How come? The condition of hearts. That's all it is. Nothing more, nothing less. Individual A who is able to say, no, this is a haram business deal. I can't do that. Even if I've got to do a nine till five and live off minimum wage, I will not put haram in my belly. No, thanks. How does he, how does he do that? And then you get individual B who's falling prey to every pyramid Ponzi scheme under the sun. He doesn't care. Riba, alcohol, cheating, uh, uh, depriving people of their, he doesn't care. How come? One difference, not two, one. And that is what? The condition of the heart. So I love the words of Shumayt ibn Ajlan. Shumayt, son of Ajlan, he's a hadith transmitter and a tabi. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the believer strong in his heart, not necessarily strong in his body. And then he elaborated. He said, don't you see how there may be an old senile man who's weak in his body, yet he's able to fast the long summer days, and he's able to pray the long summer nights in Qiyam. 
whilst the young man next door is unable to do all of that. How come? It's here. It's the condition of the heart. Are we building a case for it in your heart? These are three reasons I have shared with you so far. Let me share with you a fourth. The place where fitna is presented to is the human heart. Do you think it's your eye that saw what was haram? Or did you think it was your ear that heard what was haram? Or did you think it was your hand or any other part of your anatomy that touched that which was haram? Akhil Karim, dear sister, these are just gateways. The entry, the destination is the heart. Fitna goes straight to the heart. And this is mentioned explicitly in the hadith which Muslim narrates on the authority of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fitna, test, tribulations, temptations, whatever they may be, they are presented to the heart fitna by fitna the same way that a reed mat is woven stick by stick one at a time fitna by fitna temptation by temptation one at a time it's coming to the heart he explains he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listen to this beautiful hadith he said therefore any heart that absorbs the fitna it takes it in what happens a black dot is placed upon that heart you feel that dark you feel that gloom and misery when you don't lower your gaze for example or cover your ears for example you feel that black dot almost physically he said but any heart that repels this fit with patience, it turns away from it. Despite the pain, he said a white dot will be placed upon that heart. This continues to happen till one of two hearts will develop with a person. There's no third. Till one of two hearts. He said one of the two hearts will eventually become so white, it will look like a white stone, pure and clean. Therefore, no fitna will ever harm it so long as the heavens and the earth endure. Allahu Akbar. May Allah give us that type of heart. What is the second? And as for the other type of heart, that's just allowing anything in, it will end up looking like a black and gray dust colored vessel that is upside down. Upside down. And you can try to pour this cup with water all you like when it's upside down, it will never fill. He said that's what the heart will look like towards the end. Black, dust colored, upside down, not recognizing good, not forbidding evil, but being obsessed with sin. So you try to offer that type of heart admonition and reminders, it just deflects it. You give it ayah, hadith, Quran, sunnah, you know the person's not dialed in, he's not there, they're not checking in with you. It's deflecting it. So where is fitna presented, dear brothers and sisters? Where does it go? It goes to the heart. Why is it that when you see something in the street that you know maybe perhaps you looked at it a little bit too long and then it disappears? And khalas, you go, okay, Max, and you do your shopping, and you, you go home, and you come to sleep, you close your eyes, la ilaha illallah, the image is still there. What happened? It went to where? It went to the heart. That's where fitna goes. How is it that you may hear something? You know you should have closed the browser. You should have swiped left, right? You know you shouldn't have given it your eardrums, but you do. You switch it off. You say, astaghfirullah. Did you need to do that? You go home, you play with the kids, you go to sleep, switch off the lights, pin drop silence, you hear the track. What happened? It went to the heart. You go on the internet, you read something you know you shouldn't have read. It's a shubha, it's a doubt. It makes you shake in your religion. You switch it off, you go home, you come to sleep, you can still read it, you can still hear it. Your iman is now lingering. Why? Because it went to the heart. And the same can be said about khair, goodness. You come to a lecture like this or any other one and you feel uplifted, you feel strong, you feel now buzzing with iman, you feel light emanating from you even when you are leaving the masjid. Why? Because that khair went into your heart. So fitna is presented to the heart. Remember that your eyes, your ears, they are gutters, gutters. Imagine this, uh, gutters. And they are pouring their contents into your heart. And we're just allowing these gutters to pour everything at any time of the day into that poor heart. It can't take it. It can't do it. Then you ask, I'm anxious. I'm anxious. I'm miserable. I'm upset. I'm unstable. I'm unhappy. What have you filled those gutters with? What have you filled those gutters with? Because whatever you've chosen to fill them with, they are pouring where? Into the heart. So this is another reason why we've chosen this topic because the uh, home of fitna is the heart another reason why we've chosen this topic this is number five is because of the home of happiness is the heart values like happiness and the contentment and peace satisfaction reliance upon allah tawakkul patience where do these values reside not in the hands and certainly not in your bank account these values reside only in the heart so you spoil your limbs with all of the embellishments of your of life that you want if you leave your heart and attended, watch how happiness will vanish. And the opposite is true. Give your heart the attention it deserves and Jazakumullah khair, you are doing this by attending the likes of this lecture. And watch how Allah will bring happiness back into your life because it's your heart that you are treating. Even though your limbs may be in pain, your heart is at peace,
peace, you will be able to repeat the words of our predecessors who said what? There is a paradise in this world. Whoever does not live in this paradise today will not enter the paradise of the hereafter. What paradise are they referring to? The paradise of having a content heart that knows Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and is at peace with Him. That is a paradise that you experience in the life of this world before the hereafter. Malik ibn Dinar, he said something similar. He said, Must left this world without experiencing the sweetest thing it has to offer. They said, what is the sweetest thing that life has to offer? He said, knowing Allah and loving. That sits in the heart. So when the heart is attended to, forget about what your limbs may be experiencing, even if it is imprisonment, a physical one or a metaphorical one. You are at peace. And you will repeat the words of Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim who said, these are wonderful words, who should be written with ink of gold or something more precious than the ink of gold, like the tears of the righteous believer that he sheds for the sake of his Lord. He said that in the human heart, there is a sense of scattering that can only be gathered by returning back to Allah subhanahu And in the human heart, there is a sense of loneliness that can only be erased by finding companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the human heart, there is a sense of fear and anxiety that can only be removed by fleeing back to Allah. And in the heart, there is a sense of regret that can only be extinguished by being content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. So where is the home of happiness? The home of happiness is the heart. We ask Allah Jalla Jalaluhu to allow us to taste it and to treat our ilha. Why else have we chosen this topic? This is number six from the seventh. Because brothers and sisters, the greatest of all deeds, they are the deeds of the heart. See, how much do we speak about the physical manifestations of Islam? Salah that you do and zakah that you give and fasting that you do. And we talk about that a lot. And rightly so, this is part of the religion. How much attention do you feel is given to those inward forms of Islam? Acts of reliance and submission and penitence and khushu and humility and feeling the awe of Allah and loving Him and fearing Him and hoping in Him and yearning for Him, and desiring that proximity with the Divine subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are, according to the consensus of the scholars of Islam, greater than the physical acts. As a sinf, as a category, they are more noble, the internal acts of worship. And it's quite simple, isn't it? It's a no-brainer. Do all of the physical actions of Islam you want. Pray all day, right? But in the absence of certain internal acts of worship in the heart that are absent, all of it will be in vain. Like Tawheed, unifying Allah, believing in Him. If that's not there, what does praying mean? Nothing. As a Muslim, you may fast all day, day upon day, and pray night upon night, but then you have an issue of riya showing off. There's no ikhlas. All of those good deeds come crashing down. Subhanallah. That's the importance of having this in check. So they are what? They are more important. They are greater as a category than the physical actions of Islam. Are we giving it attention it deserves? Furthermore, this is an interesting point here. Um, the actions of Islam are required sometimes. صح? Not all of the time. Yeah, you're sometimes required to pray. Five times a day, minimally. Between them, you don't need to pray. Fasting, you, you, you do that once a year. If you don't fast again, you're not really sinful. So the physical actions of Islam are required sometimes, but not other times. As for the inward actions of the heart, some of them are required every second of the day. Are you allowed for a second to pass from your life without being a mu'min? Are you, are you allowed for a second of the day to pass by where you are in doubt of Allah? Are you allowed to be insincere for a second of the day? You're not allowed. Now we do these things. May Allah forgive us. We fall prey to them. But we're wrong for doing it. We ask Allah to forgive us. But you are required to be in that state 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's why they say that the inward actions, as Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he said about the, the inward actions, that he, those inward actions of the religion is what Allah primarily intends from us and primarily primarily what he wants from us, it is the foundation of all deeds. And as for the actions of the limbs, they complete them, they add to them, they enrich them. And then he says that the inward actions, they are like the soul of a body, whereas the physical actions, they are like the body. And what is the worth of a body without a? What is the worth of a body without a? Without a soul, yeah? It's dead. You can love your wife as much as you want. You can scream over her demise, may Allah give your wife long life. But two days, three days into her death, you'll be calling the coroner saying, for heaven's sake, can you 
you please rush to the house? She's beginning to st She needs to go underground. He needs to go underground. Why? Because the soul is not there. So the real value was what? The hair? The real value was in the soul. And now that it's gone, you want that person out of your life. So these inward actions, ya ikhwani, ya akhawat, these are the soul of your relationship with Allah. Jal. One more heading I will share with you before we move on. Why have we chosen this topic of the hearts? And that is because the center of attention on the day of judgment will be the human heart. The showdown will all depend on the state of your qalb. And who knew Allah better than the Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa Who knew Allah better than him? Who recognized his Lord better than him coming only second place to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he says something, give it weight. He said, listen to this dua as Allah documents it in Surah Al-Shu'ara, chapter of the poet. Ibrahim, he says, Rabbi habili hukman wa alhaqni bil salihin. My Lord, give me authority and allow me to follow in the footsteps of the righteous. Waja'alli lisana sadiqin fil akhirin. And give me a reputation of honor in the latter generations of people. Waja'alni min warathati jannatin na'im. And allow me to be an inheritor of the gardens of delight. Waghfir li abi innahu kana min adhalin. And oh Allah, forgive my father because he has gone astray. Wala tukhzini yawma yuba'athun. And don't disgrace me on the day of resurrection. Yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la banun. On the day when no one will be benefited by money or children. Illa man atallaha biqalbin salim. Only a person who meets Allah with a sound heart. That is the most precious thing you can offer your Lord on the day of judgment. And it will be the center of all attention. Show me your heart. And that is why how beautiful were the words of Yahya ibn Mu'adh who said that the distances of this world, they are covered by your feet. That's how you move. Distances of this world, they are covered by your feet. But the distances in the hereafter, they are covered by heart. These are the elevate. Where's your heart? Why was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ahead of the race? How come? What made him special to any other companion? Wasn't the tallest? Wasn't the most handsome? He wasn't the richest? He also wasn't the poorest? He didn't die as a martyr like Sumayya and Sa'ad and Umar. He wasn't persecuted like Yasir and Bilal and Suhaibra, he didn't have as much money as say as Zubair or Abdul Rahman ibn Awl, yet he is ahead of them all, including the scholars and martyrs of this nation. How come? Simple recipe. Are you ready for it? Bakr ibn Abdullah, he said from the Tabi'een, it wasn't a lot of prayer and fasting that caused him to win the race. He said, but it was something that fell into his heart. That's the secret. His heart and how he felt about the religion and Allah was different. Thus he is, wala sawfa ya Allah, as Allah said, he shall be pleased. So this is the seventh reason why we've chosen this topic, which is the center of attention on the day of judgment and your elevators in that race in the hereafter is about the condition of the heart. We ask Allah to purify them. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too. So please consider sharing and we will bring more videos in the future inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallahu khairan.